Howdy folks, this past week of June the 13th, 2022, the High Energy Astronomy and Astrophysics community celebrated 10 years, or one decade, of the New Star mission. To contribute in celebrating this, I thought why not do a quick overview of the New Star mission and highlight a few of its many contributions that particularly stood out to me. Folks, my name is Nick, and I'm one of many space cowboys in that I am an independent, unaffiliated researcher, and let's discuss 10 years of the New Star mission. The Nuclear Spectroscopic Telescope Array launched on June the 13th, 2012 at 9 a.m. PDT, on a Pegasus XL rocket dropped from a Lockheed L-1011 TriStar aircraft over the Kwajalein Atoll in the Pacific. Yes, I know I probably butchered the pronunciation of Kwajalein. Let me know how you would pronounce it. This was not the beginning of the New Star mission, though. It started to be designed in February of 2008. The mission was approved in 2009, and was scheduled to be launched in August of 2011. Much like James Webb, obviously this mission was delayed in its launch. The initial motivation for the New Star mission came about when there were numerous technological improvements to gathering data in the hard X-ray band, that is, energies above 10 kilo electron volts. These numerous technological improvements came primarily from the heft Hero, and in-focus balloon missions. New Star was designed to be the first focusing high-energy X-ray telescope to be placed into orbit and gather high-quality data from the hard X-ray band. This stood out as the two other most comparable missions, Chandra and XMM-Newton, had hard cutoffs at 10 keV. New Star was designed to operate between 3 and 79 Kilo electron volts, providing data deep into the hard X-ray band. To gather this high quality of data, NuSTAR required a 10 meter focal plane length, which provided some engineering issues. Launching a 10 meter payload would be particularly difficult, so engineers used a deployable mast system, which once the payload reached its 600 kilometer near circular orbit at a 6 degree inclination angle, the mast would deploy, giving the required 10 meter focal plane length for its two telescopes. That's right, NuSTAR has two telescopes aboard, the focal plane module A and focal plane module B, often abbreviated to FPMA and FPMB, with energy resolutions of approximately 0.4 keV. Obviously, the New Star mission, given its name, Nuclear Spectroscopic Telescope Array, was primarily designed to gather high-quality spectroscopic data. However, it has gathered some excellent imaging data and timing data that have contributed to numerous works providing further understanding of our universe. Now, I will leave a few links in the description for you to go out and see and explore some of the different contributions New Star has provided. But what I want to highlight is just five ones that particularly stood out to me. Obviously, I am very, very biased as I'm super interested in neutron stars, but I have included some contributions from New Star outside of the neutron star realm, so to speak. But before I get into those five contributions I want to highlight, I need to say one thing which I would regard as a major contribution to science as a whole. And that is that since 2015, the New Star mission has been operating primarily as a guest observer facility. This provides individuals such as you or I or individuals in an academic setting primarily to utilize the New Star mission and help guide which sources the mission is actually going to take a look at. This is a great way of allowing so many people into the scientific world. It allows us to open up a fantastic community and have very fruitful conversations about the nature of our universe. Now into the 
five contributions I want to highlight. The first contribution should be no surprise, it's a Neutron Star contribution, and that contribution is that New Star helped in discovering the brightest pulsar. New Star observed the source NGC5907 ULX, that ULX standing for Ultra Luminous X ray. This is an ultra luminous X ray source that, until New Star observed it, was thought to actually be a black hole. As it turns out, the data New Star provided suggested otherwise, that it is actually a accreting neutron star. I study many accreting neutron star sources. Many of them are actually quite dim, and most of them are actually transient. And this source in particular, though, being ultraluminous, opened my work up quite a lot. Next, New Star provided data along with data from the Chandra and Alma missions to show evidence of a neutron star at the center of Supernova 1987A. Supernova 1987A is actually a source that I've studied. I studied uh, supernova remnants. I studied it back at my time in a university, and I still continue to study these. Now, uh, admittedly, uh, Supernova 1987A has not been a primary focus of mine. Now, we theorize that, you know, it was going to be most likely a neutron star, but the fact that we have evidence to suggest that it is, is a massive contribution. Now, this third contribution that I want to highlight is going to be the last of the Neutron Star ones. I had to limit myself to three here since I limited my list of contributions I wanted to highlight to five. I could talk about this for hours, most likely, with many other contributions, but this one, again, primarily uh, hits home with me. And that is that New Star provided follow up observations of the Magnetar Swift J1818. And although New Star did not discover this per se, New Star provided evidence to help suggest that Swift J1818 is one of the youngest, if not the youngest magnetars known, that also doubles as a pulsar. Again, this is a source that I study. I study multiple different sources, and this being one of them, and having a look at a magnetar that is very young, but also doubles as a pulsar, is instrumental. Swift J1818 is going to be a source that higher energy astronomers and astrophysicists observe and study for many more years to come. Now that we've gotten all of the neutron star stuff out of the way, the fourth contribution I want to highlight actually comes from Eta Carina, one of the brightest sources of our night sky. New Star provided evidence to suggest that this incredibly luminous star is capable of accelerating cosmic ray particles to almost light speeds. And this is massive, because from a physics standpoint, we had always sort of thought this to be the case. But observations from New Star helped suggest that it is actually a reality. The last contribution I want to highlight has to be from black holes and AGN. You can't talk about New Star without black holes and AGN, so I, for my last contribution I want to highlight, want to talk about the source ARP-299. ARP-299 is a source where we see two galaxies merging or colliding. One of the supermassive black holes at the center of the rightmost galaxy in this frame has actually been seen to be devouring a ton of gas while the leftmost black hole in this frame from the left galaxy is either hidden or dormant. This is actually quite a discovery, because it gives us a look into galaxies merging. This source, just like SwiftJet 1818, will be studied from the AGN folks, as well as the supermassive black hole folks, for many more years to come. New Star was one of the first missions I began working with, with my time in a university setting. And although I don't use it a lot right now for my work, it is a mission that I, whose data I will turn to almost assuredly in the future. After 10 years, New Star has been a very fruitful mission. And it continues to be a very fruitful mission, continuing to gather 
some very high quality data from the hard x-ray band. It has contributed so much to our understanding of the high energy universe, and it will continue to contribute much more. I want to congratulate everyone affiliated or associated with the New Star mission on 10 successful years, and I wish them many more successful years to come. My name is Nick. I'm one of many space cowboys. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.